I know it's strange that Starry Hilder is in Florida, <laughs> Georgia, Alabama, Florida, Tennessee. And, uh, and I'm going to talk about off-grid and the best place to be now. You know, I want to throw this out here. Remember, I think his name was, um, oh, he wrote the readout book, American Readout, James Rawls, I believe his name is. And this is the problem with that book. That book is not a timely book. That book is not current. That book doesn't have present, what I call present truth. That book was written how many years ago? And it's outdated. I'm sorry, it's outdated. So people who are using that as a, um, a searing stone, as a guidepost, you're, you're, you're getting um, the wrong advice right now because right now, right now is what we have to look at when, um, when it comes to where do we go during these end times. And we are living in end times. Where do we go now? You know, we have these block states that uh, uh, James Rawls talked about, the, 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 the top states, Idaho being one of them. And that's why me and my ex, just we, we read the book and we're like, Idaho, Idaho is it. It was either Idaho, uh, there's also Washington. I believe Oregon is, is the, one of the other states. You know, and then there's other states that are on, on the bottom of the barrel and, you know, uh, he, rate, he rated all these states, but this is the problem with his rating system. Number one, it's outdated. It, it's not current because population changes. Um, yeah, population changes. Uh, the, uh, the economics of the world change. The president's <laughs> government um, changes. Health care has changed. So everything that he advised, really, I mean, you can use it as some of it, some of it, uh, to give you a little bit of a foundation. But right now, I'm going to tell you, moving to I bad idea. Why? Because so many people now have been flooding out to Idaho from California, and all the prices are driven up. The, uh, the mindset of of you know the locals you know because it, let's just put it this way we have all these people moving from california and it's changed the landscape why has it changed the landscape because the people from california are leaving for a reason and they're, they're leaving the city they have no experience living off the grid they have no experience living in the mountains of idaho they just have no experience so they're bringing in a whole different set of this they're bringing their, their um, opinions with them, uh, their, their old habits. Uh, their, and so they come and they show up in, in some place like Idaho where people are like, yeah, people are off the grid. And even if you're not off the grid, uh, people live a very um, basic conservative life. These two um, growing their gardens, having uh, chickens and goats, and they're very private people. Uh, they're... They're, um, they love their guns, and they, um, they love God, and so that's a different mindset. They're very self-supporting people, and they have their own sense of community. And so then you bring in the Californians, and now you have a bad mixture. And so the Californians have come into that area, and they have um, basically bought up everything because they have the money, and now they're driving up the prices quadruple, quadru I'm saying quadruple, quadruple, because um, the, the estimated value of houses, you know, uh, when I was living there even three, four years ago, you could get a place for maybe 200000 That same house today is now worth four to five hundred thousand. That's no lie. So Idaho off grid, it ain't happening. Don't even consider Idaho. Don't really even consider Washington. Don't consider really Oregon. These these places have just been getting a too out of control with their prices. And here's another thing that um, I think the book really overlooked and now I'm beginning to see this because I'm down in the south and I see what is the most important factor when it comes to living off the grid and, and self-supporting or country living it's your food food and water right food and water so Alabama Georgia Tennessee 
these states, even the, the upper part of Florida where I'm at, long growing seasons. You know how valuable that is? This is crazy. It is in the middle of winter and I'm here sweating and it's green and people are putting in their gardens and there's still fruit on the trees and that's a long growing season. You know how valuable that is? You don't have to worry about when winter sets in, you have no food. You don't have to worry about all that long-term food storage. And, uh, and then, you know, surviving on that. You don't have to worry about your heat and um, trying to find resources where you're going to get your wood and having a wood stove and, you know, shoveling snow and, and bearing the burden of winter. You know how, how winter shortens your lifespan? That's why people come to these warm states, the snowbirds, is because it actually leads to the quality of their life and the longevity of their life than opposed to living in a state that has winter. Uh, winter usually means a, a more cloudy days. So now you're using up your batteries, you're using gas, uh, well I shouldn't, yeah, because you have to charge your batteries with a, a generator. So they're, they're not, um, Idaho just isn't really the greatest place to live off grid. You come here, you come to Kentucky, you come to Tennessee, you come to Georgia, you have full solar. Florida, the edge, the, the upper edges of Florida, you have full solar because you have full sun 24-7. So now you got the warm weather with the long growing season, you have sun, so you have access to year-round solar. I mean, come on, you don't have to worry about heating, you don't have to worry about snow, and so it's better on your health. Uh, let's see, do I need to say anything else? Now, of course, there are highly populated areas in the south. There's no where I was at Wildwood, Georgia, is right down the road from Chattanooga. Chattanooga's pretty big. And then, of course, there's Atlanta. But I'll tell you what, when you get outside of those areas, there is nothing but country. Country. Be I, I didn't understand how much country there is. And the nice thing about, uh, like, Tennessee and Georgia and Kentucky, there are mountains. They're not as big as, you know, uh, Idaho. Mountains? Oh yeah, they're mountains. And they're, th these eyes have heels, right? These, <laughs> you know, um, yeah, there's places that uh, you don't want to go. So that means there's rural areas uh, to actually live and survive. You know, these, those are my, these are my top picks now. Um, in fact, my home base uh, from now on is probably going to be either in uh, Georgia, Tennessee, or um, half, half time down in here in Florida. And for my health, especially um, the warm weather, where I can continue to exercise, I can continue to sunbathe, and I can continue to get fresh food. And, you know, and we all should be looking at that because part of sustainable living is our health is our health. So, you know, and the cost of living is so much lower. So I'm just telling you, uh, American Redoubt, they need to rewrite it. In fact, this is a re rewrite of the Redoubt, <laughs> uh, which is, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's outdated. So um, that's just a, a, starry, a starry hill who used to be off the grid observation from all my travels and you know what I've been traveling from state to state to state so I think I pretty much have um, the pulse on what would be a great state for off-grid or just for sustainable living right now and uh, those are my picks and that's what you need to be looking at uh, I do